All right, you're live. All right. Uh, I would like to, as the Vice President, call this meeting to order. The time is 6.05. Can we rise for the pledge? Uh, Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, uh, at this time I would like to call for a nomination of the temporary chairperson. I would like to nominate uh, me to say and see where she is because she only for one vote. <laughs> That's fair. All right. Uh, so, yes, is there a second? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Uh, the motion carries. So now, um, as the temporary chairperson, I will call for nominations for president. Okay. Okay. Is there a second? Okay. Okay. And I'd like to nominate John Prestige Walbert. Okay. Is there a second? Okay. Second. Um, so we have two nominees for president. Um, so now, um, historically speaking, the last vote that I was involved with, we only had one candidate and it was a general consensus. So I guess we need to get a feel for how to conduct the vote. Oh, I, I guess we could do it like how they do it in uh, nominating committees for a party. Uh, when you go on the street for a party, usually they'll, uh, they'll do it by written vote and then they'll count the votes and see if anybody has a majority. And if they do, then that person becomes president and count the keep voting until we get one. So that's kind of how we usually do it. Right? Have you scrapped paper over there, Patty? <laughs> but they would have to be read aloud, right? Yeah, every, according to Don, everybody's vote needs to be. Spoken out loud. Well, you can't vote roll. in secrecy. Yeah, roll. 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 Instead of doing that, we'll get okay. uh, so, um, <clears throat> so, we're going to do a roll call vote uh, between uh, Mr. Mitsuji Walder and Mr. Haggerty. Um, so, I'll start this way and go clockwise. Hey, uh, John Mitsuji Walder. John. Okay. Uh, Paul. Me. <laughs> uh, I vote for John Mitsuji Walder. Paul. 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 Congratulations, Mr. Thank Haggerty. Thank you. Uh, now. Yeah. It's been a long time, Paul. I was going to say 15 <laughs> years. <laughs> this is your 20th year? Your 20th year starting now? Well, they have to wait to celebrate the anniversary. <laughs> All right, so Mr. Haggerty, you're up. Okay, so we are. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, Mr. President. 2021 school year, and our, our new school board. Uh, thank you for your vote, and uh, looking forward to the this year. Uh, lots of cooperation to pick up lots of new people on our board. And it, it should be very interesting and informative, I think, going forward uh, as we all kind of pick up the same way. Okay, I'd like to uh, call for uh, nominations for the Vice President position. I'd like to nominate Lee Walker. Lee Walker, do we have a second? Second, yeah. Any others? Nominations for this man is Tom Davis. Tom Davis. Second. The second. Yeah. Oh, Ben. Uh, any other nominations? Uh, we'll call the nomination for Vice President, and as we do with the President's position. Uh, we will uh, vote in. Is that what you call? Uh, Lee. Lee. Target. Lee. I'll vote for myself. 
I appreciate the, uh, the, the thought. <laughs> I'd like to nominate Mr. Nash. Okay. okay, I would second. Yes, second. Yes, second. Oh, okay. An additional uh, nomination for clerk. Seeing one, I think we we vote anyway, but. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. <laughs> you still be outvoted. <laughs> <laughs> See what you get for sitting on the town council first. No, no. <laughs> okay, resolution for appointment of assistant clerk <clears throat> resolved that in the absence of the district clerk, the secretary of the superintendent school uh, be appointed to serve as assistant clerk. And John needs that. And we have a second. Second. Mr. Malachi. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Congratulations, guys. Eddie said almost as many years as all. I already know. I've done a lot. Okay, our next resolution is to appoint a voting delegate to the 2020 New York State School Board Association annual convention. Val, that uh, we have a candidate. It will have to be someone. If I can begin here, it will have to be someone who's in, intending to attend the yes, convention, it and it's also someone that, if they're in, in, uh, intending to attend, that they will miss part of the thing because this takes up one entire day. Yeah, you are a voting delegate, right. right? So you have to. Uh, we will have a, an alternate to that position, but right now we're, we're, we're voting on, or we're looking for interest to be the. I was the last year, so I did read through everything. I feel like it was a half a day, but I. I'm not caught up on email this week. Has anyone seen yet? I know they asked for a consensus or a vote. Did we want to have an in-person or a virtual conference? Has anyone seen if they decided yet? No. Okay. Okay. Anything else? <laughs> so, Tanya, are you interested? I, I would be willing to do that. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Congratulations, Tanya. Uh, resolution to appoint first alternate delegate. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Tanya. We have people who get the other in the alternate. Resolution to appoint a representative to the United Mass and Herkimer County School Board Institute. Uh, this is the local group uh, composed of uh, pretty much representatives from all the Mass, Nonida, Herkimer, the, the three BOCES regions, and they meet. Uh, well, you're probably the expert on this now. Yeah. They meet, uh, These meetings are usually on Monday, Monday and once a month. Once a month. And, um, it's, it's a pretty big group. It's informative and it deals with a lot of uh, local issues and they, and they sponsor a number of local uh, things like uh, inviting uh, you know, local politicians to talk about uh, their views on uh, 
education. It's a very good learning experience for someone who hasn't been on board for a while, then when you can like do that or do a one day, it's, um, I would do it, but I'm on my, I'm, I'm on my last year, I don't need the experience. <laughs> it also gives you a chance to interact with people from a lot of the other local school districts. Which so this is our consortium and the New Hartford consortium, the two. The three counties. Yeah. Okay. 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 Now that uh, we should be appointed to represent the Long City School District on the Executive Committee of the Oneida Madison Berkeley County School Board Institute for the 2021 school year, Natanya Davis be appointed alternate to represent the Long City School District on the resolution. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Can the alternate attend? Yes. At any time? All of us can go. It's just who will speak on our usually, behalf. Usually, it's just a matter of availability for business. So, yeah, anybody can go. Well, you know, since there's no athletics right now, well, have to, we have to take a pause so that um, Shelly can swear and put three of you in your roles. Okay. I don't know that it's the mass. Just the audio. Just the audio. We just say we're Jack Horn. No, the signal is down. Oh. And I will take the discharge of duty to the office. <laughs> an option to do audio only for that type. I know when we were at home, if I turned my camera off, my audio would have been I signed it on. But is it the YouTube or is it the Zoom? The camera. Oh, oh, oh. If you turn this off, it's going to be a better audio, but we're not going to be able to see the whole room. Yeah. I'll try and see what. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New York. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of vice president according to the best of my ability. Do we turn to hide that on the camera? You want to switch with me? Okay, we're going to have to do that for you. Not everybody's comfortable. You guys are trying to get you on the camera. He's trying to get you on the camera. If you're not right now, you're not visible. Well, I'll give you a visible thing. Bless you for letting me in with your shirt into the wall. That's all you can see. Let me in. That's all you can see. It is kind of watching a pretty funny. I tried to do a background for a meeting, and every time I move, I disappear like the Shepherd Cat, and I was like, okay. Do that again for me. I just found me to wear. But I was supposed to have to be a good thing. I was supposed to be a good thing. I was supposed to be a good thing. And it will take me to the charge the duties of the office of the board. I know that I can't do that. I'm just Resolution 
do a approved district compliance option for the 2021 health report. Page. Item 14, resolution to authorize Board of Education members participation in various meetings. Resolved that the Board of Education authorizes attendance at county, state, and national school board association meetings and other such conferences as approved by the president of the Board of Education. Expenditures at such conferences are approved by the director of business and finance. I move the resolution. Second. Second by Mr. Fitzpatrick. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Very good. Resolution to appoint Rome City School District Treasurer. Resolved that Jody Hedda be appointed as Rome City School District Treasurer effective July 1st, 2020 through June 30th, 2021. I move the resolution. Second. Second. Uh, Mr. Fitzpatrick. All in favor? Aye. 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 Resolution to appoint Rome City School District Deputy Treasurer. Resolved that Michelle Pacheco be appointed as Rome City School District Deputy Treasurer effective July 1st, 2020. I move the resolution. Second. Second by Mr. Nash. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> Res resolution to appoint Central Treasurer for extracurricular activities accounts. Resolved that the school district treasurer be appointed as central treasurer for extracurricular activity accounts for the Rome City School District for the 2020-2021 school year. I move the resolution. Second. Second by Mr. Malachi. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. A resolution to approve mm -hmm. school purchasing agent that the director of business and finance be appointed school purchase agent for the Rome City School District for the 2021 school year. I move the resolution. Second. Second by Mr. Fitzpatrick. Can I ask a question? Yes. I'm just curious, all these were 17 through 26. Is there any additional pay or stipends for these positions? No. Thank you. Uh, I move the resolution. I think, I think it was seconded by Mr. Fitzpatrick. I'm sorry, I just want to be correct because I did find the link here, but again, there's no name. So this is based on all questions. Yep. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Resolution 19 <clears throat> to appoint records management officer. Resolved that the director of business and finance be appointed records management officer uh, for the Long City School District for the 21, 2021 school year. I move the resolution. All in favor? Uh, second by Ms. Ms. Davis. And uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Resolution <clears throat> to appoint data protection officer. Resolved that the Director of Information and Technology be appointed uh, data protection officer for the city, uh, for the Rome City School District for the 2021 school year. I move the resolution. Second. Second by Mr. Nash. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Who is that? Who is that? Patrick Sullivan. Resolution, <clears throat> excuse me, resolution to appoint student residency determination officer resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the director of business and finance or his designee is hereby <clears throat> designated as a person to make determinations of student residency and entitlement to attend the schools of the district pursuant to section 100-3y of the regulations of the commissioner of education i move the resolution i have a second second mr malachi all in favor aye opposed carry resolution 22 will point <coughs> resolution to appoint asbestos designee that upon the record Resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the director of facilities uh, be designated as the asbestos designee for the Long City School District for the uh, 2021 school year. And this would be Mr. Rod Negris, and I move the resolution. Second. Second by uh, Mr. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Resolution to approve district. 
compliance officer for the 2021 school will resolve upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the following people be appointed as compliance officers of the Rome City School District sexual harassment and non-discrimination programs for the 2021 school year. Amanda Jones and, and Jeffrey uh, Morton. Uh, I move the resolution. Second. Second by Mrs. Ms. Davis. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Who would like to read? I would. Mr. Fitzpatrick. Mr. Vice President wants to take it over. <laughs> um, <laughs> Mr. President, that's your Number 24, resolution to appoint 504 compliance officer, resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the director of people operations, or his designee is hereby appointed as 504 compliance officer for the 2020-2021 school year. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. 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 Any discussion? I had brought forth a question on this one earlier today. Um, I, I inadvertently did not know this is where we were going to change reading, by the way, but um, I had brought a question to Mr. Blake that now that we have three people in the role, we have a director of supported learning and two assistants, that it seems that it would be better served that this goes back to the supported learning area. I understand based on um, Mr. Blake's response that the director of people operations currently has this as a role in his contract. But I am um, I am concerned that we've added these positions to make this a more cohesive department and feel that it, it, we would be better served if we were handling 504s and IEPs in the same area based on what I learned last year at NISPA and throughout my year on the board. So um, I'm going to vote no on this. I don't know if anyone else has questions or concerns that that was. Well, can we just get for you know, we're in public? So, can we get clarity on what the issue is there currently? It's a matter of this contract, this employment contract. And then, so, presumably, it would be to move that role, which would be amended, not one, but two contracts. Is that something we can do at this juncture? I can if that's you can amend this contract, yeah. The, the point being, the 504s are for medically uh, related issues, they're not special education issues. And if you talk to anyone that uh, has been looking at our department, you see our special education numbers are significantly higher than they should be by state averages. And it's because of this function, they were doing both duties forever. And what happens is uh, special education departments gen generally tend to overclassify instead of giving a 504. So our 504 numbers, if you look historically, are uh, minuscule, and our special education numbers are astronomical. So in order to try and balance that, we moved the 504 program out of special ed uh, as a standalone entity, which uh, you can find, uh, as the kind of point out, you know, this is saying that it's easily housed in, the, in that room of special ed. You will find that in most districts that are much smaller than us because they don't have the personnel to separate the duties. And it's one of those things that kind of gets thrown on somebody's plate. So we made the decision two years ago to move that out of special ed in an attempt to try and reduce our special education classification numbers. So the concern that I have is that now since that, time two years ago, we've now added two assistant directors. So I hope that with that much staffing in that department and that many sets of eyes, that we would be doing a better job of determining because in my experience, someone who has, like my son, an auditory processing disorder, or someone who has dyslexia, or someone who's visually impaired, it may be a medical, sorry, I have to keep in my mask here. Um, it may be a medical diagnosis, but it's accommodation. It's accommodation similar to what you might see in an IP. It's handwritten notes or a headset to hear. And um, I just feel that we have such a strong team now that we've assembled that I would like to be leading us maximize and justify having a director and two assistants in that department. Um, I mean, I hate to use the terminology or the, the phrase rather that to a hammer, everything is a nail, right? If we put this in SPED's hands, they're likely to overclassify. And we've gotten numbers back from audits saying we are overclassifying. And, and I think the tendency is based on a love of children and our students' needs to give them everything we think we can, right? I think, frankly, that you know, putting the 504s in a different group's hands would allow new director is to do what she came in and told us she wants to, to get our numbers under control. 
I think it, we, we want to go back on this in six months and say, hey, how do you think this is playing into what you're doing? But the words out of her mouth were, our numbers are big, and we need to grapple with why that is. And if this is a move we made, which would have been my very first year here, if it was two years ago, then I didn't understand the problem then, but everything I've heard subsequent backs up the, the concept that that was a necessary and right move. I'm, I'm personally happy to continue with the practice, but let's put it on the agenda to talk. I mean, this is my personal thing. Let's put it on the agenda to talk with all the relevant parties and say, how is this plan panning out? What is what is the, is it bearing fruit? You know, um, I take your point though. I, I, I just think that everything I've heard sort of says that this has been the right move and is, is where we're going going forward. Now, when people uh, Peter comes to, comes to you, uh, do you have to go through the committee on, on special education prior, you know, to the 504 process because they, as I understand, no, you don't. No, the way it should go is you go through a 504 review process, which is very similar to the committee on special education, and if that committee, uh, to Tanya's point, sometimes it might not be a 504 issue, it might be a special education. That group would then recommend to the Committee on Special Education. What happens when you lump the two together is everybody goes to the Committee on Special Education. And that's how you want to build over classification. And that's simply because if you've got the committee together already, it makes sense to have your 504 people be a part of that. The people are already there to have the meeting. Uh, it saves time for people that may have to be involved in both. So what ends up happening then is now you've got your special education staff out of the classroom more often doing meetings for students that are 504 based and not necessarily meeting the services and responsibilities of the special ed community. I, I can't sit here and tell you there's a perfect answer or solution to any of this uh, because you can make an argument for both sides as to be more efficient this way, be more efficient that way. Can I ask what the significance of change to you by the time it's possible? Um, what have our numbers in special ed been since? 2018 to now, have they gone up or down? It stayed pretty stable. Okay. So, so one year, Kathy Bregan was the director, and then this past year, you had uh, Brennan to six came in. Yeah, my experience as a former special ed teacher is that they really are two different entities, but you try to me, they don't to me, they belong better together. Not not because of the meetings or anything, just because you might start out with the 504 plan, and then those teachers. Are well aware of what might be needed that's going to switch over to, a, to an IEP. So to me, it just seems, it, logically to me, it makes more sense if the two are together. But I understand both points. I'm just saying from past experience, it seems like. And, and the necessary training, the, the main training, I attended two related to this, but one was literally IDEA versus 504. And it spoke to the goal that you're at, which is to make a fair assessment and say, are the modifications or needs of this child better aligned with an IEP or a 504 and you're looking at it right in that time and space and going with you know which way and to the point that Karen just made the examples they gave were more that kids went the other way they might have had an IEP but now they're showing improvement and now they don't necessarily qualify for an IEP anymore but they might still need again um, extra time on tests or handwritten notes because they can't keep up with notes or recorded notes or different things um and it just lines up with more of what you're saying is the goal is to to balance it out more and have less on ieps unnecessarily i want to be able to be in a room and be like which way does it go right now versus <clears throat> well we're referred over there it, so it, it, that without, was my to me without the 504 is an option in a special ed umbrella it's more like that's the only choice that you have Whereas a 504 really might have been more appropriate, but then it's not right there presented and talked about, then you're just going to go to special ed. The special ed way. So it might backfire and give us more. Most of the that's what I was asking about. It really hasn't changed then. On what, you know, if it hasn't moved the numbers down in two years, it seems like we should have been some moving down by now. It, you know, it hasn't been. So does this have to be determined tonight, or is this something that we could table? Do we assign someone now and make a decision to add the agenda later, or we table this item for now? I don't know how it's going to work. Can I jump in, please? Peter, how has this been working for us as a profession? It's worked a lot smoother than before, I can tell you that right now. Um, but and I would argue that you're not going to see numbers changing because for the first year, people were still trying to go through special ed through the 504. And then this year's numbers are completely all everything. Looking at data from this past year is almost pointless because the whole second half of the year is completely wrong. So, you know, it's 
when I was suggesting is let's as a board, it can be one of our goals or objectives is to have a, you know, whatever October check in on this. I mean, we're going to get, you know, uh, meetings with the spend department anyway, special meetings. Um, so, I mean, this should just be on our radar, but to that point, I don't see changing the direction of any of that big, that's a monumental undertaking, and we've had change of leadership. And we, and this well, year is totally moved. Well, me to, to question it. Was the no, no, that no. now you've got more bodies there, and you would hope that the three of them would each bring a slightly different perspective and push for the right classification. That's why we brought it. For clarification, though, special ed always had three people running the department. It was the director and the system administrators association and two teachers on special assignment doing administrative functions. All we did is we removed the teachers on special assignments and put certified administrators in those same roles. So the, the structure is no different than it was. We tried to go at it for a brief time with two, and it was not looking good. So uh, and that conversation happened last year with the board. The board agreed to add a second assistant director to make sure that kids got what they needed and we didn't have a, a crisis on our hands relative to CSD. So. I think that there hasn't been enough time to yield any significant change one way or the other why change what's administrative this time can we just keep an eye on it and stick to the change that we made two years ago and see if it does yield a meaningful result before we make any changes to move it back at this point yeah i think i'm in favor of, of uh, trying you know look at it again in six months five or six months yeah, and, and see yeah. what the numbers look like yeah we don't need to amend the resolution for that. Where are we? Did we move this resolution? Uh, I think it was moved and then we were in a public discussion, fortunately. Yeah. So, so why don't we vote on it and then we'll move it on to the public All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry. Number 25. Resolution designating a representative and alternate representative for the Madison Oneida Herkimer Schools Healthcare Consortium. Whereas the Rome City School District is a participating member of the Madison Oneida Herkimer Healthcare Consortium, henceforth consortium, and whereas the municipal cooperation agreement governing the relationship between the participating members of the consortium permits each member the opportunity to designate a consortium representative and a consortium alternate representative and one, the Board of Education does hereby designate David Dryos, Director of Business and Finance, as the district's consortium representative for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2020, and ending June 30, 2021. Number two, the Board of Education does hereby designate Peter C. Blake, Superintendent of Schools, as the district's consortium alternate representatives for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2020, and ending June 30, 2021. In the event that a consortium meeting is not attended by a district representative, but is attended by one of the district's alternate representatives, the district's alternate representative shall have full voting authority during the consortium meeting. Number three, the Board of Education does hereby direct the clerk of the Board of Education to provide the consortium with a copy of this board resolution, verifying its written designation. I have a motion. Okay. Tom? Second. So many hands. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Number 26, resolution to appoint the assistant superintendent for operations and management as internal claims auditor. Resolve that the assistant superintendent for operations and management be appointed as internal claims auditor solely for the auditing of the board appointed internal claims auditors invoices and payments. Mm -hmm. Education, this is Rob Mazza. Yeah. Motion and move by Patrick. Patrick, you have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Number 27, resolution to appoint grant writers. that the following individuals are appointed for the 2020-2021 school year for the purposes of writing the following federal grant. Jennifer DiPerno, title grant, July 1 through June 30, $3,750. Dana Benzo. Uh, I'm just going to read the total grant. Title grant, $3,750. IDEA, $619,750. Pre-K for three-year-olds, $2,000. Pre-K for four-year-olds, $2,000. And Veronica Siki, IDEA, 611. 
um, also July 1, 2020 to June 30, 2021, at a second of 2000. I have a motion. Mm -hmm. Second. Second. I got some questions. Pete, all these employees, all these are current employees of mine. Mm -hmm. Yep. And these two of these are outside their normal scope of work. Uh, yes. Yeah, so the district, the title grant used to be paid to a BOCES employee uh, from the North region at approximately $40,000 a year. And uh, the IDEA and the pre-K, the pre-K grants have been paid to the pre-K director since its inception. Uh, the pre-K IDEA grant funding came from a MOA uh, resulting from a lawsuit that the RAA had with the district prior to my tenure that we resolved. So they're entitled to a grant or stipend. What used to happen was the district employee grant writer that was cut mm -hmm. and that ensued a lawsuit uh, which was settled by providing stipends to uh, current district employees that were not in all the grants. Do they do these functions during the normal course of business or they do it? No. No, no, no. They shouldn't be. Okay. Yeah. Most of them are here working in the evening. I can tell you Dana and uh, Jen were here uh, in the wee hours of the evening, eight, nine o'clock the other week working on things. Do, do we have a track record of how successful they've been in writing grants? Uh, these individuals, uh, not necessarily. These grants are things that are basically federally mandated. The money is agreed to be there. Okay. You just have to fill out the paperwork right. to okay. obtain it. And then you have to manage the grant and make sure that you're budgeting correctly and working with the business department. So okay. these aren't competitive grants. These are required paperwork. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Number 28, resolution to appoint fiscal advisor. Resolve that the Board of Education shall appoint fiscal advisors Inc. as the fiscal advisor for the Rome City School District for the 2020-2021 school year. I have a motion. So moved. Second. Yeah, I have another question. Sorry, folks, but I'm new on my name. These uh, resolutions 28 through 36, they're all these um, pointing a contract or whatever. When's the last time we went out to bid on these elements? They would be RFPs, not bids. And I think all of them were done two years ago. Uh, work fit, school position this past year was their first year. Uh, fiscal advisors was just done, I think, two years ago. The architect and Gerard Forenza, the attorney, were both done two years ago. Uh, essentially, they're done at the time that the board says they wish to look at the house run. Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Resolution to renew services of Dr. Angelo and Company to perform the required annual audits. Resolve that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Rome City School District renews the contract with Dr. Angelo and Company to complete the annual audit for the school year and the June 30th, 2020 and authorizes the president of the Board of Education to sign such agreement. I have a motion. Move it. Second. 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 Watching. All in favor? Aye. 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 Resolution to appoint the law firm of Trespass and Marquardt to serve as bond counsel. Resolve that the firm of Trespass and Marquardt be appointed bond counsel for the Rome City School District for the 2021-2020-2021 school year. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Fitzpatrick. Second. 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 By Mr. Haggerty. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Number 31, resolution to appoint architectural firm of Labella Associates to serve as the district's architect of record. Resolve that the firm of Labella Associates be appointed as the architect of records for the 2020-2021 school year. I have a motion. Mr. Waldo. 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 Mr. Resolution to appoint the law firm of Ferrara Forenza PC to serve as legal counsel of record. Resolve that the law firm of Ferrara Forenza PC be the legal counsel of record for the 2020-2021 school year. I have a motion. Move it. Mr. Mr. Nash. Thank you. Second, Mr. Mr. DeGualda. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Resolution to appoint a school physician. Resolve that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, work fit medical LLC, is hereby appointed school physicians for the 2020-2021 school year. So moved. Moved by Mr. Fitzpatrick. Yeah. Second by Mr. Malachi. I, I just I, had a question. Go ahead. Uh, um, I, I mean, I know they're new and this is their first year. 
did they have to come to a lot of um, the IEP meetings and stuff like that? Because I know that stuff was extra. Yeah, there was not much extra involvement at all. Okay. Fortunately, up to the point of the closure, and then obviously oh. since the closure, they have been very helpful at the point of closure on just being updates on COVID and where they think those things are going to go. Okay. So, if the Americans are fire contractor for this, did we have a good first year? Uh, I'd say it's about comparable. Okay. To be honest with you, we, we used the prior, uh, believe it or not, we used the prior school position more for staff related issues. Uh, than we did for student related issues, uh, which we didn't, fortunately, need as much this year. So that was good. Do you have a local presence? Uh, no, I believe there are Rochester, correct? That's their main headquarters. They come out here uh, and if necessary. Any that, other was discussion? The, that was in the bid packet, I think, though, last year. Remember that question? It was. Did they have a local? Did they have an office somewhere local? I remember we talked about it. Yeah, it was a big they discussion keep topic. coming out to the IEP meetings. That could cost a lot of money. So they have to keep coming out. I'll double on check on that. Oh, I, don't, I, don't think that they, I don't think they did last year at the time, but I remember we talked about what if they're going that way. And I guess my follow up question would then be would there need to be any, or are we unsure yet, would there need to be any amendments to our contract with them upon return given the COVID situation? I would sure I would probably say if there was any amendment that would be necessary, they would bring that forward based on what their needs would be. Okay. Can I ask why we changed the location? The first year we already found. Well, medical did not want to put it in bid on the contract. This was the low better. Yeah, yeah. Rome Medical didn't bid on the contract. Who was the school physician for forever? Yeah. 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 I'm pretty sure they're not even taking new patients anymore. So. Yeah. No, they are. Certain providers are. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Resolution to appoint Amcare mm -hmm. Ambulance Service Incorporated to provide medical coverage at athletic competitions. Resolve that Amcare Ambulance Service Incorporated of Rome is hereby appointed to provide medical coverage at athletic competitions for the Rome City School District for the 2020-2021 school year. I have a motion. Move it. Mr. Nash, second. Mr. Malachi, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Number 35, resolution for student accident insurance. Resolve that the board authorizes the district to enter into a contract for the provision of accident insurance coverage for all students in grades pre-K through 12 as administered by Gerber for the 2020-2021 school year. A motion? So moved. Mr. Fitzpatrick, do I have a second? Ms. Herbowie. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Resolution to avoid internal claim auditor. Resolve that Grossman Street Armor CPAs PLLC be appointed as internal claims auditor for the Rome City School District for the 2020-2021 school year. Do you have a motion? Mm -hmm. Mr. Dijakwalda and second. Yes. Mr. Nash, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Resolution to renew cafeteria services to Rome Catholic School, United Cerebral Palsy, and Rome Family YMCA. Resolve that the Board of Education authorizes the Superintendent of Schools to sign a contract for renewing cafeteria services to Rome Catholic School, United Cerebral Palsy, and Rome Family YMCA for the 2020-2021 school year. Mr. Fitzpatrick? Ms. Perboe, all those in favor? Aye. Resolution to authorize the City of Rome to do the tax collection for the 2020-2021 school year. Resolve that the Board of Education authorizes City of Rome to collect taxes for the 2021-2020-2021 school year. All those in, oh, I'm sorry, do I have a motion? Mr. Taggarty. Mr. Fitzpatrick. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Resolution to accept the intermunicipal agreement between the Rome City School District and Madison Oneida Boses for attorney services. That upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the intermunicipal agreement for attorney services between the Rome City School District and the Madison Oneida Boses for the 2020 2021 school year be accepted by the Board of Education. Do you have a motion? So Mr. Mr. Malach. Yeah. Second by Mr. Haggerty. Haggerty. It could be for anything that uh, we usually use them only for county court, correct? Uh, but it could be for something else you might need to make. Sometimes it's policy work, sometimes it could be it's not anything we would like a major situation. It's more of a we want to 
save the phone call to Ferrara. That was my question. Yeah, that's my question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Resolution for settlement of claims resolved that the superintendent of schools, upon the recommendation of the director of business and finance and the school attorney, is hereby authorized to compromise, settle, and pay minor claims against the district in an amount not to exceed $1,000 per claim settled, and all claim settlements greater than $1,000 must have Board of Education approval. Is there a motion? Mr. Haggerty, second by Mr. Malachi. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Resolution to authorize the superintendent to certify payrolls. Resolve that the superintendent or his designee be authorized to certify payrolls for the 2020-2021 school year. Mr. Nash, second. Mr. Malachi, all those in favor? Aye. Number 42, resolution to approve mileage reimbursement rate. Resolve that a reimbursement equal to the IRS rate per mile plus toll and overnight parking charges for out of district travel on official school business be approved. It is further recommended that all employees be eligible for reimbursement at the IRS rate unless otherwise modified by contractual agreement for all in district mileage while in the performance of their official duties. Mr. Fitzpatrick, do I have a second? Second. Mr. Haggerty, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Number 43, resolution to authorize expenses for out of district travel. Resolve that the superintendent or his designee is hereby empowered to authorize all expenditures, including those for out of district travel, for attendance at conferences and meetings for which funds have been appropriated within the budget under the resolution. Second. Second. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Davis. Sorry. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. All right. All right. 44 resolution designated bank as official depository. Whereas Community Bank NA be designated as the official depository of the Zone City School District. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the following financial institutions also be designated as official depositories for Zone City School District Citizens Bank, Bank of America, Chase Manhattan Bank, National Bank of Trust, Adirondack Bank, NC Bank, Lone Peter Federal Credit Union, New York State, and Liquid Asset Fund. I move the resolution. Second. Second by Mr. Fitzpatrick. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Resolution for authorization of intra fund transfer resolved that in accordance with policy number 4201, the director of business and finance be authorized to make intra fund transfers not to exceed $10,000 for the 2020 2021 school year. I move the resolution. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. 46. Resolution to establish tuition rates for out of district students. Resolved that the following rates be established for the 2020 2021 school year for out of district students K through 6, $1,896. 7 through 12, $2,806. I move the resolution. Second. Second by Mr. Nash. Any discussion? Quick question on this. I know we worked through policy regarding this. Um, were there any changes? Are these the same numbers as? It changes every year by the state. The we state don't, we don't choose set this rate. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, and we would defer to our policy for the times in which this tuition will be waived. Correct. Okay. Right now, by policy, I don't believe we've changed that. The only time the tuition is waived would be through the teacher's contract. Teachers are allowed to have student uh, attend. And then if you are a student in the terminal year of your uh, schooling at that building and you move out of district, you may finish uh, yeah. that year. But otherwise, there's not a, there's no other way. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 47, resolution to establish a petty cash fund. Resolved that the Rome City School District is authorized to establish a petty cash fund not to exceed $100 for the purpose of paying properly itemized bills for materials, supplies, and services requiring immediate payment, and be a further resolved that the Department of Treasurer shall be the custodian of the petty cash funds under the resolution. Second. Second by Mr. Patrick. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. 48 resolution to authorize 403B tax shelter annuity companies resolved that the Board of Education also authorize the following 403 back, uh, sorry, 403B tax sheltered annuity companies for the 2020 2021 school year. 
providers, AIG, American Century, Aspire, AXA, Bright House, Factory Services, Forster's Financial, MTG, Fund Choice, GWM, Employee Deposit Act, Lincoln Investment, MetLife, New York Life, Holden, Resource Company, Plan Member Services, Great America Financial Services, River Shore Flood Insurance, Security Benefit, PEG Fund, The Legend Group, Thriving Financial for Lutheran, Boyer Financial, and Waddell and Reed. I moved to that week. Actually, no, I haven't. Got more reason. He's taking yeah, it the wrong time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if I will not need to read, I think the location, I'll continue. American Fund Capital, Cabaret Grant, Fiduciary Trust, Mass Mutual, T. Rowe Price, USA Bank, Life Insurance, Vanguard Fiduciary, now I'm in direct Second. Second by Mr. Fitzpatrick. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Resolution to accept the cooperative bidding agreement between the Rome City School District and the Madison Onai County Boces for the purchase of supplies and equipment on a collective scale. Resolved that upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, pursuant to Section 119 0 of the General Municipal Law of the State of New York, the cooperative bidding agreement for the bidding and purchase of supplies and equipment on a collective scale between Rome City School District and Madison Onai Boces for the 2020 2021 school year be accepted. By the Board of Education, I move the resolution. Okay. Second by Ms. Davis, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Let's get the resolution to authorize district credit cards. Resolved that upon recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, Rome City School District is authorized to maintain a credit card not to exceed $5,000 in the name of the Rome City School District. I move the resolution. Second. Second by Mr. Fitzpatrick, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. 51 resolution to authorize district credit card for fuel purchases. Resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Rome City School District is authorized to maintain a credit card for fuel purchases not to exceed twenty thousand dollars per month in the name of the Rome City School District. I move the resolution. Second. Uh, second by Mr. Nash. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Number 52, resolution to set instructional substitute rates. Resolved that the following rates be established for the 2020 2021 school year for instructional substitutes. Certified 114 and $61.61 per day. Uncertified 106 and 12 cents per day. And retired uh, Rome City School District teachers, $124.16 per day with the resolution. Second. Second by Mr. Fitzpatrick. Any discussion? I just want to clarify, Peter, the amount for retirees is part of contractual obligation? They're all contractual. Okay. Yep. Thanks. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Number 53, resolution sets school nurse substitute rates. Resolve that the following rates be established for the 2020-2021 school year for school nurses, registered school nurses, $113.55 per day. Retired Rome City School District nurses, $123.10 per day. I move the resolution. Second. Second by Ms. Davis. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 54A, resolution to set non instructional substitute rates. Resolve that the following hourly rates be established for the 2020 2021 school year for non instructional substitutes for July 1, 2020 through December 30, 2020. Clerical $11.80 per hour, custodial $11.80 per hour. Food service eleven dollars and eighty cents per hour. IT intern eleven dollars and eighty cents per hour. Monitors eleven dollars and eighty cents per hour. Teacher assistants eleven dollars and eighty cents per hour. And bus drivers twelve dollars and eighty cents per hour. I move the resolution. Second. Second by Mr. Fitzpatrick. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to fifty-four B. Resolution to set non instructional substitute rates. Resolve that the following hourly rates be established for the 2020 2021 school year for non instructional substitutes for December 31, 2020 through June 30, 2021. Clerical $12.50 per hour, custodial $12.50 per hour, food service $12.50 per hour. Uh, it's the food service listed price, not sure why. Monitors $12.50 per hour, teacher assistants $12.50 per hour, and bus drivers. $14.20 per hour. I move the resolution. Second one should be IT intern. IT intern. IT intern. Do we have to move and resolve to amend it or can. I think it's just. 
we need a, a formal resolution of that or we'll just amend it as from the old ways. I move that we amend the resolution just for integrity of the meeting to correct the second item of food service to read IT in turn. Uh, we vote any second. Second by Mr. Nash, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, motion carried. Back to the original resolution uh, as amended. Uh, is there any discussion? Peter, this is because of the change in minimum wage? Correct. Have we calculated any? net impact of that increase that was already projected through our budget. Yeah. I keep forgetting it's changing and changing. I thought our financial guy is the forget. <laughs> 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 Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. 55. Resolution to set athletic site supervisor rates. Resolve that the filing rates be established for the 2020 2021 school year for athletic site supervisors, ticket taker slash seller twelve fifty an hour, ticket supervisor thirteen dollars an hour, clock slash timer twenty five dollars per event, only basketball, football, and ice hockey. Change crew football twenty five dollars per event, PA announcer twenty five dollars per event, penalty box supervisor hockey thirty five dollars per event, and site supervisor thirty five dollars per event. I move the resolution. Second. Second by Ms. Davis. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Uh, 56, resolution to appoint hearing officers for the Committee on Special Education and Committee on Preschool Special Education, whereas section 200.2 of the regulations of the Commissioner of Education requires that each Board of Education establish administrative procedures for the selection and board appointment of an impartial hearing officer and whereas appointment from the impartial hearing officer list must be made in accordance with the rotational selection process established in paragraph one of subdivision three of section 200.2 of this part. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Rome City School District will use the district specific list as maintained by the State Education Department impartial hearing reporting system for the appointment of impartial hearing officers to the Committee on Special Education and Committee on Preschool Special Education when a request is made for an impartial hearing. I move the resolution. Second. Second by Mr. Fitzpatrick. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, 57. Resolution authorizing the Board of Education President, Vice President, and Clerk to appoint impartial hearing officers for special education hearings, whereas Part 200 of the regulations of the Commissioner of Education was amended to require that upon receipt of a request for an impartial hearing involving a student with or a student suspected of having a disability, the Board of Education immediately appoint an impartial hearing officer pursuant to the procedure set forth in said regulations and whereas said amendments also authorize the Board of Education to designate one or more of its members to appoint the impartial hearing officer. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the President, Vice President, and Clerk of the Board of Education are hereby authorized to appoint the impartial hearing officer to preside over special education hearings held pursuant to Ed uh, to 8 uh, NYC RR section 200.5. I move the resolution. Second. Second by Ms. Davis. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Number 58. Resolution to appoint district committee on special education for the 2020 2021 school year as defined by the part 200.3 regulations of the Commission of Education. Section 4402 of Education Law. Resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the following people be appointed as members of the Committee on Special Education for the 2020 2021 school year. Brenna Kasiki, Chairperson, Catherine Materio, Chairperson, Kristen Chichia, Chairperson, Green. Okay. Chichia, sorry. Apologies, Ms. Chichia. Brianna James, uh, Chairperson, Psychologist, Dana Benzo, Chairperson. Kristen Hartman, Chairperson Psychologist, Glenn Kuhn, Chairperson Psychologist, Christopher Wheel, Chairperson Psychologist, Jill Pritchard, Chairperson Psychologist, Bryn Tudman, Chairperson Psychologist, Jill Caroli, Chairperson Psychologist, Josephine and Sarah, Chairperson Psychologist, Kelly Berry, Yusikovich, uh, Uzi, okay, Chairperson Psychologist, Jack and Spina, Chairperson Psychologist, Child's Regular Education Teacher, whenever the student is or may be participating in the regular education environment. Child special education teacher or special education provider, special education therapist as needed, parent slash guardian of the child, uh, Linda Little, parent representative if requested, Michelle Robinson, parent representative if requested, 
district physician if requested, and others with knowledge or expertise regarding student and inter interpreting special implications of evaluation results, and the student at the age appropriate. I move the resolution. Second. Second by Mr. Haggerty. Any discussion? I'm sorry, Mr. Fitzpatrick. Any discussion? Um, I just had a question. Uh, so all, these, all these people don't attend every meeting, right? It's just Correct. okay. The chairperson organizes the meeting for the student. Okay, so so each, build, each building has a chairperson. Okay. Some buildings have more than one chairperson. Okay. Thanks. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Resolution to appoint subcommittee on special education at each elementary and secondary school for the 2020-2021 school year as defined by the clerk. 200.3 regulations of the Commissioner of Education resolved that upon recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, the following subcommittee members be appointed for the 2020 2021 school year. Psychologist chairperson assigned to building or district chairpersons. Child's regular education teacher, uh, whenever the student is or may be participating in the regular education environment. Child's special education teacher or special education teacher provider. Special education therapist as needed. Parent slash guardian of the child. Others with knowledge or expertise regarding the student and interpreting special implications of evaluation results and the student at age appropriate any resolution. Second by Ms. Davis, any discussion? Peter, could you say a few words about the, the overall committee on special education versus the, the building ones in terms of how they function and what things go you know, what? So the overall, the, the building committee on special education, that's where you're going to be having your annual reviews. You're more developing the IEPs. The subcommittee is going to be a smaller group of people uh, basically having, looking at the, the data on the child, making sure that the IEP goals are being met. Sometimes you'll have a parent in the middle of the year call for a, a subcommittee meeting to reevaluate kind of the services, what's going on, how is it working, is it, or someone some not doing their job. Uh, that would be more of an impromptu subcommittee on special education. The first resolution was more for your annual reviews, your triannual reviews, uh, initial classification. And who decides who gets what? Is that the, uh... so that's going to be Brenna. Uh, so, or, or the parent. It depends on what the parent requests. There are uh, regulations surrounding special education depending on what a parent would recommend or request that we have to be based on a parent request. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, resolution 16. Resolution to appoint district committee on preschool special education for the 2020 2021 school year is defined by the Part 200 regulations of the Commissioner of Education. Resolved that upon recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, the following subcommittee members are appointed for the 2020 2021 school year Dana Benzo, chairperson, Kristen Hartman, psychologist, slash chairperson, representative of the MISP. Municipality, parent slash guardian of the child, Linda Little, parent rep representative requested, Michelle Robinson, parent representative requested, child's regular education teacher, when appropriate, child's special education teacher or special education teacher provider, other persons with knowledge or expertise, parent or student inter interpreting special implications of evaluation results, agency representative, transition from early intervention, and the district physician if requested, uh, move the resolution. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Davis. All in favor? You picked the wrong section. Yeah. I did. Which <laughs> one? <laughs> <laughs> Of course, every time I breathe, my glasses fog up. I mean, that's why I had to point out. I'm like, I'll squint. <laughs> uh, I'm going to take off my nose for this. Uh, uh, whereas, oh, resolution to approve surrogate parent list for the 2020 2021 school year. Whereas the regulations of the Commissioner of Education, Part 200, Section 200.2E2, require that the Board of Education shall establish a list of persons from whom the district shall choose a surrogate parent. And whereas the Part 200 defines a surrogate parent as a person appointed to act in the place of parents or guardian when the student's parents or guardians are not known, or when, after reasonable efforts, the Board of Education cannot discover the whereabouts of a parent or the student is a word of the state, section 200.1, triple C. Now, therefore, be it resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the following person be appointed to the surrogate parent list of the rooms, Rome City School District for students with disabilities and the surrogate parent list 
be approved for the 2020-2021 school year. Be in banks. I move the resolution. Second by Ms. Ms. Lawson. I'll say first as well. Uh, every year we pretty much make sure you go see we're still doing it. And we've never used them, is my understanding. <laughs> we haven't used them the four years that I've been here, and I understand it goes way back before that. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, so my right. question was going to be, is one person sufficient? So I'm guessing that's a yes. Yeah. Yeah. Who's his angel, Jack? He's okay. For us? Yeah. He's I'm a sure. surrogate, volunteer surrogate parent. So and it's even more rare now with McKinney Vento, uh, because anyone that doesn't have a parent can do work for McKinney Vento for them. But, you know, I don't, I don't know that he would know what his role was, unfortunately. <laughs> the guy, does he even know he's still surrogate? Yeah. But he, um, he actually does exist because he. Get it. <laughs> Thanks for clarifying. Yes, sir. I can't tell you the exact year. You did have a hearing that involved the student that he was a surrogate and, and he was there. Yeah. 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 Well, the city needs you worry about like background checks and that sort of thing. Did you get a second? Yeah, I, yeah. yeah I didn't oh, want one. Oh, that's right. Well, it's all on his own. <laughs> <laughs> Quiet in that corner. <laughs> okay, uh, any further discussion? We're voting on it. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution carried. 62 resolution for special project authorization to resolve with the Board of Education authorized the superintendent or its designated representative to sign and submit all applications for federal funds as well as any other funds. Which may be available to the school district under the resolution. Second by Ms. Lodge. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And the resolution is carried. 63. Resolution to, uh, to establish the dollar limit for superintendent and board of education president approval of construction change orders. Resolve that the superintendent of schools and the president of the board of education be approved to sign change orders. Up to ten thousand dollars per change order without prior approval of the Board of Education to move the resolution. Second. Second by Mr. Nash. Discussion. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And the, uh, the resolution is carried. 64. Resolution to de uh, designating the school district treasurer and president of the board be authorized representative to the board in matters applying to federal assistance. Resolved that effective July 1, 2020, the school district treasurer is hereby designated as the authorized representative of the Rome City School District Board of Education for the purpose of furnishing to the United States of America information, data, and documents pertaining to the applications for federal funds as may be necessary in connection with public laws 874, 815, and 89-10. And otherwise, to act as the authorized representative of the Rome City School District Board of Education in connection with such application and be it further resolved that in the absence of the school district treasurer, Paul Hagri, the president of the board, be and he is hereby is designated as the authorized representative to the Rome City School District Board of Education for the purpose of furnishing to the United States of America information, data, and documents pertaining to the application for federal funds as may be necessary in connection with public laws 874-815-89-10 and otherwise act as the authorized representatives of the Rome City School District Board of Education in connection with such application. Move that. I move the resolution. Second. Second by Ms. Davis. Well, you didn't know you had that authority. I have a question. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, now uh, we've been moving the second in this question. My question really uh, concerns the ESSA data that was submitted, the financial expense data. Does that fall under this, or is there anything new under this from prior no, years? That's completely separate from this. It is, even though it this is, is relative to uh, federal grant funding. That's the data. That's the data is a federal transparency report. That's a new, a new piece of the federal government. So this means more your title grants. Uh, it would be if, if needed. Yes. Because we're going through that for the first time, right? The submission of that 
Uh, we've done it two years now. Where we were one of the first districts in the state to have to do it. Out of this, uh, this spring, okay. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And the resolution is carried. 65, resolution for federal funds compliance with regulations. Resolved that in order to continue with federal programs, the board renews its commitment to comply with federal regulations as administered through the state education department. Renew the resolution. Right. Second, Ms. Malachi, discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And the resolution is carried. Uh, 66, resolution for renewal of participation in the National School Breakfast, School Lunch, and Special Milk Program. Resolved that upon the recommendation of Superintendent Schools, the Board of Education authorizes renewal of the district's participation in the National School Breakfast, School Lunch, and Special Lift programs for the 2020-2021 school year and the year's meeting. Second. Second by Ms. Davis. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is carried. 67. Resolution to authorize the superintendent to utilize services of a local attorney. Whereas the district may have a number of local issues that require the service of legal counsel. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Education hereby authorizes the superintendent to utilize on a needs basis the service of a local attorney for the 2020 2021 school year. I move the resolution. Right. Second by Mr. Malachi. Discussion. Can you clarify for me? We've already approved. For our friends and BOCES, what's the function of this one? Just in case we didn't have a conflict of interest with the BOCES attorney. Most districts have between two and five attorneys on staff on, on the retainer. We've never utilized this clause in my four years here, but I, I believe it's just there in the event that you need to call somebody local on a pinch. Feels like when we do this next year, maybe that should be moved up in the agenda so that we hold all the attorney <laughs> pieces the attorney together. <laughs> This kind of looks like our policy manual. <laughs> Thank you for clarifying. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Resolution is carried. Uh, 68. This is a long one. Oh, there's only two more to go. Resolution to approve the Rome City School District Medicaid Compliance Program, whereas the Rome City School District participates in programs that provide services to Medicaid eligible individuals and receives Medicaid reimbursement for such programs, including the School Supported Health Services Program. And whereas the New York State Office of the Medicaid Inspector General requires Medicaid providers to implement compliance programs aimed at detecting fraud, waste, and abuse in the Medicaid program. And whereas the Rome City School District is committed to compliance with all applicable laws and regulations related to the Medicaid billing and reimbursement, and whereas the Rome City School District has developed a Medicaid, Medicaid compliance program aimed to prevent inaccurate billing or inappropriate practices in accordance with New York State Services Law, uh, Section 363D, now therefore be it resolved as follows that the Rome City School District Medicaid Compliance Program is hereby approved, that David Dryden, Director of Business and Finance, is designated as the Rome City School District Medicaid Compliance Officer in accordance with the program, and three, that the Rome City School District Superintendent and the Rome City School District Medicaid Compliance Officer are hereby directed to take steps to implement the Rome City School District Medicaid Compliance Program and resolution. Sorry. Second, Mr. Ms. Boyd. Mr. Scoboy. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? All the resolutions carried. 69, resolution to grant the use of Ridgeville School to Royal Memorial Hospital. Resolved that upon the approval of the superintendent of schools in the event of an internal emergency at Royal Memorial Hospital from July 1, 2020 to June 30, 2021, permission is granted to the hospital to use Ridge Mills. Elementary school kitchen to prepare meals for patients and the others. Second, Mr. Malachi, any discussion? I never realized what real possibility that might actually be. Mm -hmm. We usually use it once a year, actually. Oh. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I want to, I just want to go on record as abstain. Okay. Just a good word. For fun, I never get. Anything. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any the resolutions carried. Uh, resolution to readopt policies. Resolve that the school board acknowledges that all existing policies continue unless amended by the Board of Education under the resolution. Second. Second by Ms. Davis. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And the resolution is carried. Uh, 71, resolution designated newspaper for official notices. Resolve that the Rome Daily Sentinel and the Utica Observer, Observer Dispatch be designated as the newspapers for official district notices of the Rome City School District for the 2020-2021 school year. I move the resolution. Second. Second by Mr. Nash. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I'd like to read the last one. Do you want to read the last one? Okay. <laughs> That's the one that we're going to have to discuss. Uh, resolution uh, 72, resolution establishing day and time of regular meetings and providing for special meetings. Uh, regular meetings, regular meeting of the Board of Education shall be held every three weeks on Thursday unless otherwise indicated. All meetings shall convene at 6.30 at the district office unless otherwise indicated dates and locations may be changed on occasion by a majority vote of the board. All members shall be notified of such change at least 24 hours prior to the original date. Uh, special meetings. The president shall call a special meeting of the board when requested by any member of the board to do so. The president may call a special meeting of the board whenever he or she or the superintendent considers such a meeting uh, necessary. Um, I, I move this resolution and uh, open it up for discussion. Second. Second by Mr. Pickett. Um, and I guess I can lead off, uh, off the discussion. Um, uh, there are a number of times when we as a board have talked about um, the possibility of doing additional meetings uh, of either a subcommittee nature or possibly even returning to a previous format where we did uh, two meetings a month. One was considered a kind of a working level meeting and a voting meeting. We haven't done that in a while. And, uh, and currently we have our regular meetings occurring at, uh, at three week intervals. And we actually have um, three committees that meet, uh, although they're not uh, specifically spelled out in, in our uh, uh, agenda today, those are the, uh, the Committee on uh, Finance and Audit that meets periodically, um, the Policy Committee that meets very regularly on a regular basis and is chaired by uh, Ms. Davis, Ms. Davis, and uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, okay. uh, we were doing the buildings and grounds, but or, or actually, uh, it might be the construction of that stuff. And uh, there are other things in there. Personnel, buildings and grounds, and uh, instructional services, the board would move this past year. Yeah, maybe I was thinking about that. five to begin. Right. And, um, and so the, the, for those that uh, wish to consider uh, such things, uh, going forward, uh, the advantages to those other meetings were, first of all, uh, it was a little uh, uh, less uh, cluttered than our than our regular meetings in terms of time. And uh, it, it ran on a little bit more of an informal basis. So it allowed for a lot of a lot of discussion and actually uh, and questions. And it was, it was very uh, educational over the years, depending on, and it was open to almost any board members, although back when we formally uh, acknowledged these, we actually appointed uh, particular members who, who were expected to serve on, uh, on a board of committees. Um, so we've gotten away from that, but I think there is a feeling among another um, a number of board members, including myself, that returning to some form of those meetings would be highly desirable to, uh, to keep the board more informed on, on, the, on the areas and to do it in a 
somewhat more relaxed environment than the, the pressures of our, our regular meeting, which with the consent agenda and the reports and whatnot that tend, to be, tend to be a little busy. And the other thing that has really occurred to me since we've been doing all these virtual meetings over the last several months is the possibility of incorporating some sort of virtual capability into those, which would make them really, uh, really fairly painless. I'm not, I'm not saying every time, but certainly uh, uh, it, was, it was nice to get together virtually, you know, for an hour and only take an hour to do it. You know, it was, it was very, and it, and I thought it worked well. I thought we got good at it as, as we went along, and the and the meetings made sense, and and uh, it, was, it, it was good. Thing. So I open it up for other no. comments and well, discussion. Can I just redirect back to the, the question is basically the day and time of the regular meetings. And then we probably cover this one as an addendum to that. But that's the that's the question we're on right now is that that's true. The that's frequency, true. the date, the time. And so that's that was sort of background. Now what uh, what Superintendent Blake has said that is he, he would like to establish this meeting, and, and I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, Peter, but you said a lot of these other things are a function of what the board wants to do going forward. All of this is a function of the board. Whatever you guys want, your meeting schedule is your meeting schedule. We, the, the board made a decision two years ago to reduce the meetings because they thought they were meeting too much and they couldn't they couldn't read all the volume of stuff that was coming through and that they felt that there were some meetings where uh, especially through December January there's so little action items uh, that we were meeting for the sake of meeting and that was the will of the board at that point in time and it, you know as boards change decisions change so we're we're here to do whatever the board needs. We are talking about a difference if we're talking about going back to two weeks of nine total meetings on a regular schedule. So it's really more like eight meetings um, per calendar year. A difference, which on paper and maybe in, in the mind seems like a lot, but we've called so many special meetings this year. I would I meant to ask you, Peter or Patty, how many we had this year. There were non regular meetings. Um, but it's got to be in the ballpark of five or six. So we're really talking about a functional difference of two meetings, maybe. Um, and the fact of the matter is I was on the board for a year before we changed. And we changed, I think, for the right reasons. Um, more time between meetings should ideally give people more time to research, ask questions, uh, get their ducks in a row field questions from the public because we can release the agenda sooner. Um, I, I just, for me, uh, it makes total sense to stay on three weeks. I'm happy to hear other people's thoughts, but that's where I'm coming from. You know, I, I kind of agree. I actually was quite enjoyable last year. I think to have a, been spread out a little bit more. It, it, it didn't seriously increase the amount of work to prepare for the individual meeting. Um, Three week schedule, we're doing 17 or 18 meetings. Um, with the two week schedule, we're doing 24 to 25 meetings probably. But then it gets shifted around during the holidays. Uh, and we were still having special meetings when we were doing it every two weeks. Um, as far as uh, one of the issues was about having fewer um, tabled items. Um, we seriously shouldn't have very many table items anyway. When we uh, we have three weeks, that's, that's plenty of time to get any issue you have resolved, either through the president or the superintendent or both, uh, before you can make your meeting. Um, I like the three. I'll be happy with whatever the board decides, but I thought the three was a little bit more pleasant last year. Um, I, I would just, I'm, I'm going to say every two weeks. <laughs> and I know that's a change, you know, I, we, I think we did our diligence last year and checking in periodically to see if we wanted to change it. And I was always kind of on the fence, but I think that given COVID and how things can change so rapidly, especially this school year, <clears throat> that um, every two weeks will let us stay on top of what's going on and, and stay actively engaged with all the rapid cycle changes. And all of the planning that's going to have to take place on a very short notice, likely in the fall. Well, I think that last couple of meetings being together 
both at Rumpy Academy and here, show that yes, we I think we worked really hard to have effective virtual meetings. And I think in a small group like Paul was referring to for maybe a committee of three or five people, um, you know, that, that can be very meaningful. But I, I've also seen that we have been much more productive and efficient being in a room together. And I think that we've run into circumstances more than once this year where it wasn't often, but it was more than once that we wanted to table something, we wanted more information, but we felt like, well, we've got to do it now. You know, we're, we're approaching a deadline. I do like what Mr. Haggerty has suggested, which is to truly, if we are going to have two meetings a month, to try to have one as a working session to talk about the issues, to get the reports of the committees, um, you know, or departments, and, and digest and ask our questions, because sometimes I don't think of a question just when I'm reading an agenda. I think of it as we're having a dialogue or when someone else has posed their question. And sometimes the email threads get completely overwhelming. Um, I, I, I think there's a, a huge value in, as Lee has said, things have changed very rapidly. Things in the upcoming year are going to be unbelievably unpredictable. And I think there's a huge value, you know, as John said, it's only a handful more meetings. I would rather have that time for us to collaboratively work as a board um, and be more effective. So I would, I would be open to, to twice a month as well. I also think it's much more um, predictable for the public to be like, oh, three weeks to me was like, oh darn, what day is it again? <laughs> Where, you know, what it was previously, like, I don't know, first and third or second, fourth week, you know that that's coming and can I get a more concrete idea of what we're talking about? I mean, I'm, you know, saying that to the point that it's not many more meetings, it's not many less, you know, many fewer. So uh, I take, yeah, I'm fine with that. But what is the format you're thinking of? A work session meeting, I don't know what that means. Um, when we were two weeks, I didn't feel a tremendous difference between one or the other. I guess it was that we had somebody speak longer during one, so we could, as a board, glean more information from that person. Mm -hmm. One thing that I've been pushing for, and you can all go and check out my super email, I said I want better department updates. Mm -hmm. I've spoken with you one-on-one -on -one about that, you know, as, as we're in, in this building. Um, I firmly believe that. I, if we want um, to change the format of every other meeting to be less conducive to getting that more thorough information, I'm not for that. You know, I don't want one to be a glancing blow and then, then we're really getting a real meeting every four weeks. That's less productive. That's the danger. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not contradicting the concept. I would just like to have, because I haven't been thinking about that at all, about changing the format. What is the proposed on off schedule. Of so, right, so we're talking about two different things. One is the format and one is the frequency. So I would say more frequent and less till 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> I don't know. I just, for me, I would rather because of other obligations. It's super tough when we're here. I can, I can tell you it's not going to change the time. <laughs> sure, so, shorter, just because you make them more frequent. It's not I've done both. They weren't shorter. Sometimes they um, were longer. But I also think that, again, to Lee's point, issues come up and then it's like, oh, geez, we're not meeting again, you know. I, I prefer I prefer meeting twice a month. Thank you. I'm in favor. I just would like to know if there there are two meetings a month that are just like our general meeting. I, I don't want to. Should we have to decide on a format right now, or is that something that we could talk about? Because because I guess well, the other item that's not on this, but I think we have to talk about before we adjourn is are we going to do a board retreat or any type of training? Well, certainly um, you can make the remainder of the discussion. I would think, especially to, to John's point, if, if, if one's just going to be work session, then yes, essentially we're going to be meeting every four weeks rather than every three weeks. Yeah, that's not you know, I think so. we could have two meetings, two meetings and two months. I think it should be some formal meetings. I agree with Lee why we need to meet them. I don't agree that it should be every other week because I would like two set days a month that I know when I would know and also the public would know when they are. And you go every three weeks, like I have, I have things on Thursdays, so every now and then it's going to be in uh, conflict with them. Obviously, it's just my priority. I'm just saying, whereas if we have the first, third, second, and fourth of, of a Wednesday, Thursday, whatever, you know when they are. You can you, know, you can see your schedule. The public has a better idea when, when they are. Now, every three weeks, they don't really know unless they see it in the paper when the board meets them. I, I, I would I would like to see two meetings a month. 
So the consent is going to stick with our current format until we have a chance to discuss that further if we see that's working or not. I agree with you, John. I think, unfortunately, I think that's something that was lost in committee. I think just getting one page or one paragraph, there were definitely times I wish I could have gotten a little bit more from a department head, you know, a reported department, um, especially, and some more than others. Sometimes we had a ton going on in personnel and I felt like I would have liked to have heard more. Now we're in the middle of a construction project, you know, it, it, so it kind of varies. But needless to say, I think I think two meetings a month, no matter what the format, I think it gives us time for meaningful dialogue, um, predictability, um, of accessibility to the public. So, but with that said, I mean, Haggerty brings up committee meetings at the beginning of this topic of 72. Fitch Patrick says, that's not really at what we're discussing here, but I do feel like it is what we're discussing in a, in a very roundabout way. If we adjust this schedule to be more frequent and then layer a huge number of meetings on top of committees, I have a serious problem with that because I've not, I've not experienced that to be more efficient, not as a whole board. Maybe one, two, three people on this committee feel more in tune with what's going on in the district, but the other six are left out. That is my personal experience. It is very real. Well, I think we have had explosive bad person interperson relationships on this board in my tenure because of committee meetings. Things that get brought up in a committee meeting and two people hear A and B separate from each other. They do not agree on what, what transpired in the meeting. And then the other six of us get to hear about it secondhand. That is not cohesion. Um, I'm not saying it can't work. I'm saying my experience is it has not worked. So insofar as we're talking about the meeting schedule here, yes, I agree. Everything you said and what Lee said and what Paul said, I agree. But we are sort of hanging on a, a different topic when we say this, because I know the, the committee conversation's done. And the, everybody here knows that because we've been talking about it for a year. So- And it's discouraging to hear that committees were that inefficient because the city uses them, the county uses them, the you know, so I think that's our doing our due diligence of being more efficient. To me, your committee is your working group and they're listening to the information, but they should also be your conduit that if any of the other five or six who are not part of that committee are able to send forward their questions and get direct responses to their questions. And so I find it discouraging as a person who ran a not-for-profit. I mean, committee meetings were how we actually rolled up our sleeves and, and got things done. So it's, I guess, you know, there's pros and cons to all of that. I get what you're saying though, that do we set a meeting schedule now and then layer on committees and that overburdens people. But I really think at this point, we, most of us are, seem to be able to consensus that two meetings is, two meetings make more sense given the unpredictability of what this year is going to bring and the decisions that we might have to make. I'm personally happier to table. Well, we have the deadline with the calendar, right? Uh, can we uh, amend the agenda tonight to talk about committees? Because I, I really well, you can amend. We need to know this resolution. We need to know when right. the regular meeting is going to be, uh, what are going to be, what day of the week are they going to be, and how frequently. The okay. committee so thing we don't need to know about right now. That's a we can continue to hash that out. It, you know, we're inextricable to me personally. Can we work backwards? Of does anybody? Um, who has a preference of day of week? Wednesday. Wednesday works for me or Thursday. Okay. Wednesday or Thursday is okay for me, but the second and the fourth. The second and the fourth. Work better? It, yeah. It's only, yeah, much better actually. Either, either one of those days, Wednesday. Because I think every, the other two days are out, right? It's just basically Wednesday or Thursday. A lot of places well, do the meetings on Mondays, but we've never done that. Thursday for Monday. 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 Monday.
if we have to go second and fourth, I, in my opinion, it would have to be Thursday. I would not want to make people choose between attending a city council meeting or a school board meeting. Um, nor would I want to feel like I could not attend a city council meeting if I were, you know, active in this particular issue. Since being here, I haven't had time for both, but you know, I'm I'm, I'm an optimist. <laughs> Yeah, if we did if we did second and fourth, I would want to do Thursday, not Wednesday, because second the council meets on the second and fourth. That's why this the district used to be first and third. And the, they meet Wednesday. They meet Wednesday. They meet Wednesday. Yeah. So if we if we do second and fourth, it would have to be I think it would have to be yeah, continue second, to be Thursday. Thursday. Well we could do this all night. <laughs> I was just going to say, he wants to start okay. answering first and third one. Can you do first and third one? Third. Yeah. I, I think the third would be third and third. First and third Thursday? Mm-hmm. I'll put it in there. First and third Thursday? I have a question about this. What did you do when you came so Thursday is totally bad for you, Joe, is that what you're saying? The first, the first of the How would you do it when it was every three weeks? Does it matter then? Well, it didn't always fall in the first week. You didn't get the board of board meeting then? Uh, well, I had to choose which board meeting. Yeah. Right. Okay. So but like sometimes Tuesday? I come here and sometimes I go to the other. Tuesdays are not good for me at all. I don't want to spend my Friday nights with the guys. <laughs> no. 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 We make you Friday. You know they come on now. Yeah. Let's turn this around and go back. How about Mondays? Can we do the second and fourth Monday? Which mm -hmm. which Monday did you say that most mm -hmm. meeting? I don't know, but I know most districts in our region do Monday, so they work around that traditional schedule. That's a very common Mohawk Valley book. Board meeting night Monday. Listen, I can do Mondays, but there are going to be times where we have to say we have a hard stop at 10 o'clock at night. Or whatever time. <laughs> I agree. I think that hard stop at night. I'm going to sign the board for that. Yeah, that is a good time. We, uh, <laughs> if we are going to go to every two weeks, I would expect the expectation be that we're respectful of each other's time, that we're not using the time to have meandering conversations, and that we're. Mm -hmm. So I, did we say first and third? Because the other thing is. That does bump us a couple of Mondays because we have lots of Monday holidays right now. We have Martin Luther King Day, Memorial Day. So we can work around that. We'll move those to Thursday just because that's for Wednesday. Okay. Yeah, what days are we talking about now? So we just said first and third Monday? Well, didn't they didn't the meeting was the first Monday? I thought it was second. Paul, do you know you did it for a long time, didn't you? Okay. I did. I don't remember. Yeah, they, what, uh, yeah Monday is popular with the school board. Is, is there a website? Monday is bad for me. They probably don't have the schedule. Yeah. Of course, they might have the property. All Mondays are bad people. Saturday. Saturday? 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 Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Saturday. Yeah, that's the time we wouldn't be here. <laughs> well, would changing the time of the meeting help? Could we move it up? Oh, uh, on a uh, weekday. Oh, so say 5 30 rather than 6 30. Oh. Does that help? I'll be late, but yeah, I'll be here. Does that help with the day as well? John, what was your comment? Uh, Monday, Monday, yeah, Thursday, Thursday, right? Which one? The second Thursday, yeah. Thursday, yeah. I have a different board meeting. Well, I mean, I would definitely do. Oh, so okay. Just take okay. So wait, maybe we can do first and third Thursday. How do we get away from the first view? I had an issue, but it's maybe. Oh, that's right. No, no, I said it's right Tuesday, July. So Tuesday. Oh, yeah. Okay. How about the first Wednesday and the third Thursday? Well, we thought John Leonard done that this would be easier. I'm oh, just saying. <laughs> first Wednesday, second Thursday. Oh, we're talking about the public remembering what day it's going to be. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, is it this one? Yeah. Well, talk about me remembering. They can remember the, every third week 
I wasn't a public We still have to. We still have to. We still have to post it and public notice. Yeah, I don't think whenever we have them, it's beyond reasonable expectation that they open the newspaper, check Facebook, or whatever. Was that good? First Wednesday. Yes. No. First Wednesday is that good? First Wednesday, second. No, I something the first Wednesday of every month and the third Thursday. Oh, okay. All right. So, so I prefer to over the Wednesday. First Thursday and the second Thursday. First Thursday. Well, we're going to do it that way. My, my issue is not Thursday. Wait, so and why couldn't we do second and fourth Thursday? That's not a problem with me at all. That's why I prefer. Second and fourth? I think John had it. John had it. Because I'm not going to hold up this, this morning. <laughs> second and fourth Thursday. Going once. Going twice. Do we have a motion? To Paul accept? said he's okay with whatever we choose. Paul, Paul's cruising into retirement. He's yeah. well. I mean, he's already in retirement, so I need to. No, he's taking cruising into <laughs> education for twice retirement. Okay. So second and fourth Thursday. Is six thirty still okay? Is so we get a comment if I can move it up. I, I don't. I don't mind moving it up. I can do yeah. six. Yeah. Yeah. Six. Yeah. 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 I'll go to six. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
the void that we're one of the voids that we're trying to fill, I think, is the, is the void that was left when we didn't have a dedicated INS meeting, you know, to follow the academics uh, issues uh, closely. And I think that's even more important for the re reason that Lee said that we know there's going to be a lot of consternation, possibly movement in that area as we move into the fall and they decide how you're going to meet and how you're going to separate and all those things like that. And that would be a, a good thing to talk about. And we can do that in one of these meetings. And the other areas I think would benefit from a little bit more attention is the buildings and grounds meeting. You know, in spite of you know uh, some of John's comments, I still think that we have a lot going on in the buildings and grounds area. And I personally think that the board is not well connected with what's going on. And, and that's that's mistake and that's part of the reason that we, we, we got sort of got into a little bit of a bind with our, our stadium uh, activities a week ago but I think everybody appreciates that there was a lot of pressure to do that including myself nobody wanted to slow that up but on the other hand uh, the level of understanding uh, of the board on that I think was, uh, was questionable. But the president shall call a special meeting of the board when requested by any member of the board to do so. Yeah. My Am I not, wrong to say that we, any one of us could have asked yes, for it? Yes. I'm wrong? No, no, no. He, oh, you're right. Okay. But I'm not talking special meeting. What I'm talking about is topics that fit into this two meetings a month thing in terms of, you know, we, we now have more time and maybe we can dedicate, you know, whatever we call them, director reports or whatever. Sort of what, like we did, did we do with the, uh, the finance area. Uh, do a good job on that, you know, bringing things forward, and that's pretty complicated. And there's a lot of things going on there during the year, but but you know, we're, we're informed on that, I think. Yeah, I think if we're um, this is my only comment on committees, I'd like to see the language around what our obligation as a school board member is for those committees if it's going to be brought to the to be voted on. Um, because I think the previous language was something like we have to serve on two committees something like that. So you're adding to the volume of meeting obligations, um, which is fine. We can vote on that. I just want to see the language of it first. And then my other comment about um, committees is uh, I would hope that if you're going to reinstate some of the committees, the INS and the buildings and grounds, that you have some kind of, that it's not just a meeting to get together and chat, that it, there are measurable, there are things that are being measured and reported out on regularly, some kind of key performance indicators or whatever it is that the committee is deciding to measure and evaluate routinely. And that um, there's some thought put into that, perhaps at the first committee meeting about what's going to, like what is the mechanism for reporting out, what you're reporting out and why it's meaningful to the district and not just something we're curious about. Um, because I think sometimes those, those meetings, you can kind of, you're just, I would like to see some thoughtfulness put into the resources that we're allocating to these meetings as a district. Because it's not just us meeting as a committee, you're asking a resource from the school district or more than one to designate time now in their schedules. So it shouldn't just be like something that we ask them to do because we're curious about something. There should be some meaning behind it. I guess. I'd like, well, I'd like you to say, because I've been, I, I campaigned, if you want to call it a new campaigning, um, on the fact that I really feel strongly that the construction services committee needs to come back. And so I've been thinking about this, if we were going to go this way, and I, I'm just going to piggyback on what you're saying. But in my head, I was thinking that the instructional services committee would develop, like, because we've done this before, like, de definitely a calendar month by month of what we want to accomplish. And I think the idea of doing it as a committee, as the first committee meeting, if we did have INS, that that would, that's what we would sit and do. We'd sit and, this is our calendar, this is what we'd like to see and talk about in and September, this is what we see and talk about in October. And so we're thinking along the same lines that I am. I just feel that I, I want to agree with that I really want the instruction services committee to come back. I think uh, the important part of this is that uh, I agree with Lee. I think it needs to be meaningful. And I think the uh, challenge that I've had is I've not seen us work together as a board to set measurable goals. The goals that are on our current website are very overarching, very vague, very general. 
And I know that, especially during the superintendent's evaluation, I struggled with things that are more measurable. We want to increase our graduation rate by this. We want to, you know, improve uh, student participation in certain things by this. Like if we're going to have, you know, we want to, we want to have a long range plan for buildings and grounds because clearly we talked about several options and we still have, you know, the issue of Staley to deal with. So I think that maybe where we start again is in a board retreat, that that's something that we are able to do is to talk about our goals as a group. And I think that then deriving from those goals, we would be able to determine which committees would be most appropriate and then allocate those goals or, or um, measurable accomplishments to de determining meeting agendas. I, I agree, it's not useful if we're just, um, but I also think that the committee meetings are an important time for someone to ask relevant questions or be more prepared for what's coming on the agenda. So that being said, I, to John's point, I think it's also very important that we don't just skim over in every meeting. Um, oh, policy, they did That's this, and the next meeting is this. Slightly mischaracterizing what I was saying, but I'll, I'll. Well, but I also think that many times that happened. As the chair of policy, I think many times if I didn't interject, I wouldn't even have been able to report on where we were going. And I think that the three of us did some meaningful um, and productive work this year on policy. Um, was it exhausting? Yes. But I think that was a, an example of where you can really be an effective committee and think about how that affects our overall goals, which are to be fiscally responsible and advancing the education of our students. If I may, the policy example is a very good one because that is a legally mandated committee, right? That's the board working directly towards board duties. Same with finance. We all know we have a duty to be fiduciarily responsible for this district. We do not have a duty to point our fingers and to curriculum, right? That's just, and it's the idea, I hate to contradict Lee because I think this only ever happens like once every 12 <laughs> lunar cycles or something. Uh, so like, I totally disagree with you. And, and the idea that if we were to enact <laughs> wow. new committees, just on the principle that if we were to enact committees that we had previously, any of them, that aren't mandated, and therefore are not the board's responsibility to meddle in, then giving us working orders on what we need to accomplish is a total farce. Because you're saying, well, what are you gonna do about it? And we're not gonna do anything about it. That's the truth, because we are here. And so what I am going to advocate whenever we continue this conversation is that we ask, nay, demand, that the administration, the cabinet, that they tell us more of what we need to know. And, and now that we're on a three, or uh, you know, rather uh, every two week schedule, I think, like you said, stagger them, have the department, have them be more robust, but geez, I mean, I've seen the room after Chris does a 30 minute work session and granted, they're not as frequent as you probably want and maybe even as they need to be. And I, I agree on that point, 100%. But it's not exactly fireworks show, right? Is it the appropriate information? Yes. Is it a lot? Yes. Having three people on the board that are more familiar with than the other six doesn't serve the board exactly the way that we're proposing it might. That's just the fact because you're still going to have six ignorant people who then aren't getting the work session because they're supposed to be getting it secondhand from a board member that was at the committee meeting. Mm. I'm just not in favor of it. I, so, I just, I, so I just wanted to say, you know, to characterize the objective of, of the board as people who should be measuring the performance. Yes, we should within our mandated rights, not outside. That. I, I, I don't mean that we should be measuring, I mean that we should be receiving reports of measurement that we're requesting, but have the request be based on something that is within our scope. I didn't mean that we personally were measuring anything. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, I need you to clarify something. So you said with the committee, three people would know, the other six would not. Well, without a committee, what, all nine not know? Am I missing something? If that's the case currently, which I personally don't believe it is, mm -hmm. But if that is being postured as the alternate to having a committee where three know, 
that the other nine would not know, then we're not doing a good enough job advocating for ourselves. Call a special meeting. Do do some legwork. If you have questions, I've literally never seen an email not go answered in this chain of people. So, I mean, you, you're more than welcome to ask questions. And I have said just in this meeting and many times prior, I would be happy to have the uh, department heads go more at length. I would be happy to because I know I'm hearing it from the horse's mouth. I'm not getting it filtered. I'm also holding these administrators accountable to the public because they're saying all this stuff in, in public session. And yes, I know the committee meeting is a public session, but they happen at nine o'clock in the morning, which means they're not. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and I just am all for having fewer meetings with the public, and I really do hope that we can continue to Zoom. I hope the the consensus is so overwhelming that at a state level we decide, you know what, whatever accommodations we have to make, we're going to make. And that people can continue to come in uh, electronically. But the fact is, by having these committee meetings, it, it often, in my experience, turned out to be three people knew what was going on, and six people got hearsay. Sometimes they got straight dope. Well, sometimes they got hearsay. <laughs> And it was oftentimes inconsistent hearsay. There's two people, yeah. you know, you'd have, you'd have three people attending the same committee and you'd get three different versions of what happened, which is why I think we would, we, we, we decided that we would rather hear it from the department head because we're going to be hearing what the committee would be hearing as a whole rather than having three people tell us what the department had told them. And isn't that much more efficient? Hearing it directly from them, and I think that's why we decided to to, to well, the disband that, certain committees. The language that we created when we amended the committee policy did state that we could establish committees as needed. Mm -hmm. um, at, you mean the ad hoc committees? Yes. So I think to Lee's point, or and to Paul's, there are certain things that might warrant a committee this year. We want to talk about what to do with certain buildings, projects that we tossed out and some of us were in big favor of, some of us were not, that we got derailed on. Some things instructionally, especially now, you know, there's a lot of data that I still want to see regarding, you know, how we connected with kids, how, you know, how our educators held up through all this. Like there's, there's big questions to ask, answer in relation to instruction because of the crisis that we're facing. So, I think there's some kind of compromise in here. Again, I think some of it stems from a bigger discussion that would be for us setting some work goals and where we want to go. Because while well, you continue to say mandated, I think mandated means I'm doing the minimum. I think that it's our job. It is our job in the language of the district and in the language of, of the school board association. Our job is to establish the vision and mission for the district and make sure that the actions that we are taking align with reaching those overarching vision, that overarching vision through specific goals. And I just feel like we need more of that. I feel like, I feel like we did a lot of, and it's, I've said before and it's my least favorite, I don't like to make hair on fire decisions. I like to be like, this is what we want to do this year, but in the next three years or in the next five years, we talked about, I mean, Peter had the architects come in and they gave us beautiful potential for what our athletic facilities could look like. We had lengthy conversations about here are some small things, here are the repairs that might be needed, or hey, here's where we might have growth and we might need to look at another capital project. Like there's there's reasons to have those that don't fit into a regular board meeting because it's not pertaining to a specific agenda item, but it is pertaining to where we need to go. And if we do vote yes or no on something on a Thursday night. Does it align with where we still want to be two or three or four years from now? Because sometimes no means not yet, right? We've already been there. So I just struggled with, I, and again, I think that just comes from the nearly a decade I spent in a not-for-profit is sometimes you were like, this is our day one. And sometimes this is our, where do we want to get in the future? And I don't think we get, I think that's what I'm missing mostly from committees is how do we tie the two together so that we propel this district forward. We are already doing some amazing things, but we are, are we are lacking in some things. And you know, data shows that. So I just want to see us be 
more efficient as a collective group. So I definitely take to heart what you're saying that all nine people need to be on the same page and be informed and, and be connected. However, I also know the benefit that there is to smaller meetings and, and, and getting some idea throwing going or some, are we, are we thinking long range? And that's not just to this room. That is, again, I'm coming into my 18th year of having children in this district and we lose the long range piece. We lose the step, 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 measure, 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 because that's where we want to go. It's, oh my God, this is what we're trying to do this year. This is the fire we have to put out. And I get it. I, after a year on this board, I totally get why that happens. We are throwing curveballs on a dime. Hey guys, your phone system's not going to work after June. Better fix it. Hey guys, we have a pandemic. Time to close school. Like no one knows that's coming. So there's a lot to be said for taking each other's pulse in, and as you said, particularly with the department heads and what's happening there and getting, because sometimes when I get the stuff on the agenda, I'm like, wait a minute, where did that come from? So well, I don't, I think you're, but I think your example undermines your argument, doesn't it? It doesn't support your argument because your example was the capital projects and the capital projects were always on the table for all to see. And we went from a capital project where we're considering uh, maybe maybe making modifications to every single building in, 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 in the district to, hey, uh, let's think outside the box about redistricting and maybe that solves our problem. And, and we had the architects here and we could ask them directly what their opinion was and how, how can we make this work? We asked them how we could make it work if we had to make the modifications. They were here to answer our questions directly. We asked them how can we make this work if we did redistrict and they were here to answer our questions directly. And, and we were able to come up with a plan, which I think we probably would have implemented had, had COVID not come into play, to, to, to check off a lot of boxes. And we were able to accomplish something that was, I think, very productive and answered a lot of questions that this district was facing. And we were able to do it as a full board. But if we would have filtered it through committee, it would have slowed the process right down. And we would have only gotten bits and pieces of information that the committee chair would have felt was necessary for us to hear and if, if we wanted to, to, to hear what they were talking about, we would have had to filter through all the minutes of the meetings and read them ourselves and try to interpret exactly what was going on in the meeting rather than having the discussion here ourselves. I think so I mean, that's, 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 I, you know, that's why I would rather have these people here in person or the full board to listen to them and what they have to say rather than hear anybody's interpretation of, of what they were telling them at some policy committee meeting. Um, you know, a few weeks uh, prior. So, I mean, that's just, that's kind of how, how I look at things. I'd rather hear it from the horse's mouth. I don't want to hear it filtered and I don't yeah, want the process to slow down. Let me, let me take one. Okay. What, what I would propose that we do, and, and this is the very start of our, our year, as I said earlier, is I would propose that we plan to have, as soon as possible, a board retreat sort of an in-house board retreat, not a not one that's orchestrated by an outside entity, but based on a collection of topics that we want to talk about and we'll read that down to, to a manageable number and, and schedule a retreat. Now, now, you know, Karen has already said that she's thought a lot about some INS topics. Uh, we may have some having to do with uh, the, the virus situation going forward that that's certainly an area that we talk about i think i think our financial people for instance could present a very good overview of the finances of the district which would be helpful to, to the new board members and get us all on sort of a common fitting footing because we have some very talented people and, and it would be informal enough where we could ask questions and i don't know just how many topics another topic that i would like to see us touch on is is the uh, you know the, the buildings and grounds or the capital projects going going forward in terms of what we currently have on a drawing board and what, what we're going to do? But I, I wouldn't do this. Try to do this all in one retreat to pick out a number of topics and, and see who's got the which one is the top prospect for for discussion. Peter, is there anything that would preclude us from developing a um, a survey monkey to distribute to the board members? Like, what do you think is the biggest challenge our district face? You know, or like your top two or top three. What is, you know, um, the the most important capital project you want to see us address? Um, 
you know, there's got, I think there's got to be a way. I know Paul and I, when we did our little I think exercise activity, I know we're the data people, but I feel like if we could get everybody's input when we're not all feeling the pressure of, you know, if this open dialogue, I feel like if people could just anonymously be like, I, I, I'm, I'm most concern, concerned about reconfiguration. I'm, you know, most concerned about how we reintegrate back to school. Like, to get everybody to submit their. I don't think it needs to be anonymous. I mean, we work as a group. We should yeah. know what our concerns I would, are. What I would say about that, there's nothing that just says we can't do it. I would wait. We have a facilitated training so people understand the scope of the board. Because a lot of times people think you can do things that really you don't have any legal authority to do, and it would be. You don't want to start going down a path that is, is not meant to be, uh, which is kind of what NISBA does when they facilitate board goals. They help boards understand what is the goal for a board and what is the goal for a school district because they are two separate entities. Um, what I was going to recommend, because based on what I'm hearing, it sounds like there's a, a desire to meet more frequently, there's a dire, desire to have more information and a desire to hear the information directly from those people responsible for executing the task at hand. So if we're going to meet at 6 o'clock, would it be amenable to make 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock a desired hour quasi-committee type portion of the meeting, where that 6 to 7 hour uh, time frame would be Chris Brewer might get a half an hour. Alex Regas might be get a half an hour. The next meeting, it might be Dave Dryall, and then it would be Jeff Moore for personnel. So uh, meeting, we're doing, so on the second and fourth meeting, try and follow me. Second and fourth meeting of the month, the six to seven hour would be Alex Rodriguez and let's just say Jeff Moore, facilities and personnel. The active agenda for that night would be instruction, uh, curriculum instruction and finance. The next meeting, you would have your curriculum finance updates, and the working agenda would be from the updates you heard two weeks prior. So you're hearing from the departments for an hour before the meeting. Two weeks later, you're acting on items that they're talking about. So you're kind of getting both the best of both worlds without adding a whole ton to your plate, I think, based on what I'm hearing. I, like I, I can't say it won't. I can't say it won't length in the meeting all I'm saying is I think it gets everybody to a point at least a starting point of your hearing from people directly and you're uh, not voting on things immediately you're you're kind of flip flopping. I think that would be tremendously helpful. Yeah. So can Paul and I start by working on that and then we'll we can continue to discuss the committee piece as we go through the coming weeks so we're not all here till ten o'clock because yeah. Yeah, I think it would be. I think it would be uh, beneficial if we just did a little brainstorming on our own, and that's what I was going to suggest too. Yeah. I know there's a lot of topics that I could list, and you probably all can. And if you do that and just bring it to me, or I'll send something out to you, and you can say, "Oh yeah, I'm interested in that," or "I think I'm know what's going on there," and we we could use that as a as a kind of a primer for whatever we do in terms of you know. Committee meetings, not committee meetings, or what we do in the work session versus the, the voting meeting. Uh, so, and Peter's idea of dedicating the first hour, which would work for the people that would be coming in to talk to us, it wouldn't be, you know, they would have to. Yeah. Yeah, it, would be, it would be very efficient for them, you know, for the organization. So, if our meetings are going to second and fourth, then our next meeting would actually be this Thursday? 23rd. 23rd. I mean, it would be But we are meeting today. Yeah, I don't see it in the internet. Yeah, we so are meeting today. Yeah. 23rd. Oh, 23rd. Uh, also, don't we historically talk about uh, instruction for the existing committees at this point? Do you take a chair? How soon are you looking at doing a, a retreat? Because it, that could be a good topic for we're just going to do it sometime next week. Yeah, I think it's something that happens. You can pick a, a day or you know, a time. So we're good. President is usually the chair of the finance committee, and then okay. there's usually a, and then right now we have policy. When did that come to be? Because Jennifer Geiger was. 
finance chair for five years and she was never board president. Is that important thing to you? No, that, that was when we had the formal five committee subcommittee structure. You know, that, that was a few years ago, but it's kind of evolved. And quite frankly, the, we've got we've got your committee in that, and that was just sort of passed along. I don't know if we were, were you formally? Uh, yeah, we, I was formally on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we're on, okay, because John, or no. I was probably yeah, yeah. ran it. The policy generally is chair and hand every year. Yeah. You've been pretty effective in terms of. You know, I would be sad to leave that on. committee with the work that we have done. Not to leave. <laughs> I enjoy that. I enjoy the policy committee because I I like starting and finishing something. It's good to check it out. <laughs> so you're going to be on for the next 10 years? <laughs> no. No, no, no. No, my next thing graduates in two years. I might get. You know, one more. You might get six years. I'm. I. I don't think I can commit to be Paul Andrews. So are we talking about committees and chairs and membership at the retreat then? Is that what we're saying? Because it's not. We, we could, not but I was really thinking about topics. You know, areas that we really thought. You know, that we wanted to concentrate on. You know, right. That right. Might, might steer us towards a committee, or maybe it's just an emphasis for the for the working meeting. You know. The, the, I'm, I'm not necessarily advocating committees. I just think there's things, topic areas that uh, the board could spend right. more time on. There would be more general understanding than there in the current meetings. I think there's a wide range. Of so for tonight's meeting, um, the only thing that we have left for business is setting a date for that retreat. Yeah, but or we could do that even after the fact. I think the last thing was when we've done it right. Uh, we, we've decided on. on we're going to go with the two meetings a month and the dates. Yep. Did we hear you? Unless somebody yeah. wants to know. I was a chair. Did we just determine that that was the case? No, we were. I know we so were. So who else was finance like, last year? Because it, it was Steve was the board president. I guess. I think finance last year was Steve, Paul. Yeah. Or if we want to do finance chair too. I don't know if Paul wants to be finance chair or if he wants to. I don't know. I'm not. Historically, no. I thought we would I don't mind continuing. Do you still want to do policy? And 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 committee members. Yeah, I'm interested in that though. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean yes, but I'm see we're putting the cart before the horse by doing this. Well, thing. I guess I guess the concern if, is if committees are on the table, then we should do that all at once because I only bring up those that are well, because historically I thought we did it at the reorganization. I thought we did too when I asked Peter, he said we did it. So I think the board said the general discussion. If you're entertaining at a committee, then it should probably take place all at the same time. That's fine. I don't mind doing it that way. I just wanted to know. So I got the question. If John has his heart set on being on all the committees, yeah. I guess my question to that is you know, obviously, finance matters are going to continue to come up, and we need to have a good handle, but. The policy matters are moving forward because we are changing policy service. So, can we agree that the committees will continue in the interim, those two committees, until the yeah. new yeah. committee? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Do we need to add? Did, did you want to jump in on finance? Because now there's a vacancy on finance, right? Because it would just be all Paul and do you want to bring him up to speed? I don't know who else was on finance, to be honest with you. It wasn't Ian Walters? Yeah. Paul, Paul, and C. So now you just don't have. Is there anybody else on that call? Yeah. Is there anybody else on that call? The thing is, going back, you know, a lot of these committees, people came to the committee meetings. They, they weren't technically on the committee, but they came to uh, because they were interested in a particular topic or something like that. Just, I mean, the typical board member is generally uh, retired, and I, that's for something I would like to see change um, going forward. Mm -hmm. I would like to see a more diverse group of people with more diverse background and, you know, working class people who maybe don't have total control over their hours. I mean, I'm not saying all are working class. I don't know. It's a great aspiration. <laughs> what I'm saying is, <laughs> if, you've got, if you've got, you know, control over your schedule because of the field you're in, then yeah, you can be a great board member and come to whatever meeting, whatever time, because you can move things around. I am not in that category. And I will not be um, for the next year. So I am 100% in favor of, uh, you know, 
making sure that we're moving in the direction that allows more people to not immediately write off the idea of being a board member. You know, they say, well, when are the meetings? Oh, they're at 11. Okay, what, a night? No, in the morning. Well, I'm working. Anyway. Yeah, but we had ours in the evening. I mean, I think historically it's at the discretion of the members of that committee. I'm not saying that in contrary to anything that's being said right now. I'm just saying, putting that out there. You know, that's something I'm very concerned I mean, if you want to meet Saturday morning over coffee and that's what your committee decides, I don't think that that's, you know, I don't think we're precluded from doing that, but. And there's a lot of difference to the staff. In the finance meeting, we had several, that's, you know, you know, Rod and Rod and uh, Jody. I mean, right, policy people. didn't require, yeah. other than, than Peter, oh, right, didn't Peter. require, right. Well, they, go ahead, they have done so. Right, but you're not asking somebody to come in off their hours, off their normal work day. Right. I mean, you're not asking if we already have the administrators or, coming yes. in, then you have them well, also. Do. Yeah, I, that's just, that was my, it's a small point. I think it's very important to consider the fact that it's a very specific type of person that has the flexibility necessary for this role. And we should be doing what we can. Yeah. So the next question was definitely a board retreat, which last time we did this, did you, I don't remember. We did do a one day retreat and we were able to roll it into a holiday day, right? Yeah, let's let's work on the brainstorming the topics and then we can map out a retreat. You know, Peter has suggested that we get you know a formal presentation on what a I think I'd like a hybrid. I agree with you. I think it was all formal presentation and not enough there's not enough to share the talk even to too many of them. Yeah. You sit and listen and, and you sit and say, okay, we're gonna do the work. I was listening to the last don't we have to be careful there has to be a certain amount of instruction otherwise it becomes a, a meeting over the phone that's why i say it's always good to have some, either your attorney present or somebody from this list so that you're not going out of bounds relative to what you're allowed to talk about and not allowed to talk about i, I think it would be a good refresher to understand the scope of the board and have like a like it doesn't a even need to be a, it doesn't need to be a formal training this right. will come and let you ask questions and just answer your questions and then be there to to guide you through the conversation yeah, yeah it doesn't have to be you guys get to choose you get to we would just that. like their talking time to be capped yeah yeah <laughs> agreed yeah but then we can less. talk <laughs> it needs to be a true back and forth as opposed to uh Listen uh, to my whole presentation. Or that presentation. Uh, <laughs> Listen to my five minute presentation. I'd be fine with that. <laughs> um, and I mean, some of the stuff was very valuable. There was one that he ended, and I was like, oh my gosh, I could listen to more and gain more knowledge from that. But it didn't allow us time to fit everything in. I just, I know you, I thought you had said about something about this weekend. I'm like, this weekend, I can't. I'm sorry. I'm in the middle of work, madness, and planning for a party. So. I'm off the. Is that what we're doing? Are we scheduling them to right now? Or well, no. Well, no, they're going to try to change. I thought that's what we wanted to do. I think we're going to play very well. Did we vote on our. Eddie, did we vote on the last session? Yeah. 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 Do I have a motion to adjourn? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much.